Hello, welcome back to Project Air. I'm James, and this week's episode is all about FPV uh, with this plane here. We are in a lovely uh, wintry morning setting today. Um, so this video is basically an all-in-one uh, deal. When I was starting FPV, I wanted just one video which told me pretty much everything that I need to know, at least what I needed to know when I was starting out, uh, before I got more in-depth with everything. So this episode is going to be all about choosing the right aircraft, um, choosing your electronics, and generally I'm just going to give you some tips and advice on how to uh, create your own FPV platform, your own FPV uh, aircraft mothership thing. Uh, <laughs> and then at the very end of the episode, I'm going to take you through setting it up for a flight and actually going for a, a test flight at the airfield. Stick around, and uh, if you do find that video helpful, remember to give it a thumbs up and I will appreciate that. So, oh, I just fell over. <laughs> oh, it's cold. Oh, a load of ice just went on my back. So, with that, let's go back to the studio, let's put an aeroplane together and go and fly it. So I thought for this video we'd break it down into talking about the airframe, we'll talk about the electronics and we'll talk about the FPV gear that you need to get started. So starting with the airframe, obviously the airframe is the aeroplane itself without all of the motor and the, the, all of the electronics to make it go. When choosing an airframe you can go down a lightweight route or you can go down a sort of more heavy duty route. With the lightweight FPV setup you can basically turn anything into an FPV aircraft and have it sort of uh, explore the area, be nice and lightweight, portable, um, easy to maintain, it won't destroy itself too much if it crashes and all of that kind of thing. The caveat is though that you cannot carry big cameras and they don't generally have the range. This little plane here, this could actually be turned into an FPV uh, lightweight platform, a little explorer uh, if you will, um, by simply slapping a tiny little uh, camera on the top of this, a little all-in-one unit. And yeah, they're, they're usually quite fun. If you crash, you're not going to destroy anything too much, but yeah, you can't go as far. If you'd prefer to go down the route of having lots of batteries, carrying a big camera, big uh, heavy gear, then you're going to want to have a, a more sort of substantial, bigger airframe. Now, the airframe that I'm using is called a Sky Hunter. It's a nice airframe because it's sort of in the middle. It can carry quite a lot of battery capacity, but it's uh, it's still nice and light and portable. I quite like this airframe actually, it's made a good solid explorer over the last few months for me. Much of this is thanks to having a nice wing loading, it's nice and portable, it can fit in the back of my car. There's a great big battery capacity in the nose which is fantastic, and it also it's a twin boom plane so that's quite nice and uh, unique, it's almost... Uh, it's got a, a quite a nice character to it and also it's nice and simple because it's actually just a three channel aeroplane and that means that it just uses the elevator and the ailerons and of course the motor to fly. Um, so yeah that keeps it nice and simple and generally when you're making your own um, FPV system, your own FPV platform, you want to keep it nice and simple or a, a, at least as much as possible. I always like to think that if you have less things then there's less things to, uh, to turn on and less things to worry about. If you want to see my full build review of the Sky Hunter then you can head to flighttest.com Com. There's a link in the description. Okay, now you've chosen a good airframe, it's time to talk about the electronics. We've got the motor here. It's actually, ow, I just stabbed myself with the propeller. <laughs> so this is a 935 kV motor. It produces about a kilogram of thrust when combined with one of these, which is a four cell battery. And this goes up front under this whole section. So this fits right in here and you can fit probably that and another smaller battery in parallel with um, each other to make a bigger capacity battery for this motor. And yeah, we've got uh, only three servos, one on this aileron, one on that aileron, and one on this tail. It's extremely simple, but again, that's what you want. You want simplicity when it comes to all of this stuff. The general rule here is just to follow the manufacturer's instructions when it comes to setting up your airframe, or if you're scratch building or whatever, just go and test it without the cameras and everything on, and just tweak it from there. Uh, and then you can, you can upgrade, try different motors, that kind of thing. 
and uh, yeah, you'll have more success that way. Talking about the FPV unit itself, this is actually a completely separate unit to the rest of the aircraft. That means it's powered, it's got its own power system. It's powered by this here. Um, this is a little two cell battery. Um, it has more than enough capacity to run this thing for hours. And yeah, it's a really nice little pod. Now on this thing we actually have two cameras. So we've got the FPV camera down here. This is the main camera which sends video to this transmitter and this transmits it to not to there to my to my goggles and that again is a separate system to this camera and this camera's job is just to capture the HD video from the airplane and that means I can I've got a really nice good looking uh, image that comes back from the plane from every mission. The reason we have two, if you didn't know, this doesn't actually record video. So even if this was HD and everything, it wouldn't be able to record and save that video on board the airplane. So yeah, you can get a transmitter online, you can get all of this as a sort of all-in-one pack, that's what I recommend you do. That's what I did at first. So talking about wiring, um, this basically, there's a little cable which goes into this camera and along, it does actually go underneath, but that's just to keep it out of the way. And this co comes out and goes into the transmitter module here and this transmitter module has got this power cord also which goes in through this the same sort of uh, plug there um, and on this you have different frequencies and channels you can change the go through the different channels and then through the different frequencies on that band and that means you can select uh, whatever sort of frequency you want to use. All you have to do to connect it to the goggles is find the right, uh, the same connecting frequency on this, this, these goggles here. That's basically all there is to it. It's pretty simple. I'm going to include some links to some more resources so you can read up about this stuff in your own time. Um, otherwise this video would be just way too long, but I hope that I've given you a bit of an overview of what plugs into what. With that being said, let's go and uh, show you how to fly this thing. just on our way to the flying field uh, where we're going to take off so it's our flying field let's just say it is and we're just going to take you through the uh, the process of getting a plane set up and uh, ready for an FPV mission, uh, mission. so yeah let's uh, let's go there now and we'll get all set up and ready to fly this is the flying field that we're flying at today you probably will have seen it before if you've seen some of my other videos um, what time is it now for four four, four, four twenty and, uh, it's just about going dark because it's the winter still. So let's get this set up and ready to go. So I've turned the radio on. I've got this battery. This is the battery I'm using. It's a 3000 milliamp hour battery. So that should give us uh, about a 10 minute, over a 10 minute flight time. Uh, I could run a bigger battery or I could run multiple batteries with both of these leads here. But uh, yeah, just running the one tonight. Now I'm going to plug the battery for this uh, whole unit here and we can see there that we've chosen those channels the plane is now active and position the battery for the right center of gravity so not to break anything the wind speed is around five miles an hour when you're doing your first sort of FPV flights you want to make sure that there's not really that much wind you know uh, so I'm gonna plug these goggles in I've got my nice <laughs> my nice customization there one thing you should bring as well is like snacks and things to keep you warm, especially in the winter, because... <laughs> yeah, I didn't realise it was going to be this cold. It's pretty cold, isn't it? Now I'm going to look through these, and I can't see anything. It's because the lens cap's on, <laughs> that's why. Plugging these goggles in, should be able to see a video. Yeah, so you can just about see through there. Uh, see that? Not really. <laughs> it's the problem with trying to view through, like, some... The multiple. Yeah, multiple things. Start the recording on my DVR on here. Now that should be... Oh, let me just plug it in first. <laughs> you see... Try and make it simple because if you have more things to plug in, there's more things to remember to forget. So that's flashing, so that means it's now recording. So all of this on here should be able to be seeing this video out of this um, this camera. I'm going to turn the GoPro on. The only last thing to do, apart from like check the centre of gravity and stuff, is to put my new gloves on. Top tip: get some gloves and uh, cut one of the thumbs off so that you can actually feel your thumbsticks on the remote control. Probably makes, makes me look a bit stupid, but it really helps to keep your hands warm. The controls going the right way. And now I'm going to do a centre of gravity check. Now we're going to do a hand launch. Obviously the propeller is behind my hand, so you have to be very careful with doing this. I don't really recommend this. Just be safe. So we're going to throw this into the air, sort of that way, and then we're going to explore the area. So I'm just going to get up 
few mistakes high, trim it, trim it out. And then, uh, and then I'm going to go into first person. And hopefully I'll be able to see quite nicely through the, uh, the video. Okay, going into first person. Okay, that's all right. I can just about to see. So uh, if I'm right, I'm coming towards myself now. Yeah. And this is what you should be asking your spotter. You should always have a spotter and be asking them, where is the plane? And uh, just to make sure that you've got your your eye on everything. Oh, what's what? I lost it behind your hair. Uh, okay. <laughs> Can see uh, the hill over there, so I'm using that to navigate from. And there's also the reservoir where we do our other projects. Um, there it is. So lost it for us. I can't really see the ground on the uh, the the video, so on my video feed. So what I'm going to do is increase the brightness. So I can actually see the ground. And now I'm coming, I think I'm going into the wind at the moment, so that's nice to know where the wind's coming from, and th then you'd be more aware of where you're going to be blown away to. So I'm coming right up the top of us now. I can see quite well on this feed actually with the uh, video. It's not breaking up too much, so. Yeah, let's have a bit of an explore. Let's uh, do what this plane is designed for and go and explore a few places. So I'm going to fly over these fields. Uh, always make sure you've got permission to fly over these sort of places. You okay? You almost hit a bird. Oh. <laughs> so I can see I'm coming towards the cricket pitch there. Um, and now I'm going to turn it over the cricket pitch. So I'm just establishing like a pattern, basically. Uh, I'm going to fly over these fields over the back of us because I know that there's nothing over there and uh, nice and safe. How are you finding it, Mike? Not too cold? Hands are a little chilly, but it's all right. <laughs> My right hand is a bit chilly. Is that the one without the glove? Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Back over towards the, where we are. I should be going over the sort of, um, the end of the, the pitch now and I'm banking around. Yeah. Right, and now I'm going towards that lake in the distance. So. And I'm going downwind at the moment, so I'm going to be wary of my throttle setting and all of that. And basically, you just need to have uh, make sure that you're not flying over anything. That if you crash, always think that if you're going to crash, what am I going to hit? Because it's a, a real possibility. There are some sheep down here, but I think we're all right. Now I'm going to do a low pass over the the airfield, the cricket pitch. My goggles are steaming up slightly, so I might have to uh, go first, uh, third person again in a minute. Okay. If I come back towards us, I'm going to take my goggles off and just wait for them to un unfog. If you point towards it now, Mike. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's, that was really helpful. <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to see that. So, so now I'm just going to fly it like a normal aeroplane, normal remote control plane. And yeah, we'll probably just come in for a landing now, I think, while we're ahead. So I'm going to do a few uh, few passes, just to line it up. Oh, actually, I'm going to come around here. So I'm going to line it up for an approach, bring it in, splatter the throttle, flare it. And there we go. Successful flight. Boom. I'm glad that we didn't crash, <laughs> otherwise that would have been a very bad de demonstration. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. If you did like it, remember to like the video, uh, comment down below with suggestions for new videos, and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.